Hey guys, Mark here at Blue Glow Electronics. You know, as we were looking at remodeling the audio barn down here, um, where we're standing right now is the second floor, and this used to be uh, open air uh, cow barn, basically. And where we were standing, you could drive a tractor right up the middle, turn the forks, and set big bales of hay up here where we're at right now. We've since then completely renovated the entire barn, made it into usable space, and there's stairs on the front of this barn, there's stairs on the back of the barn to get up top, but neither one were really conducive to lifting heavy items up and down the stairs, right? So if you think about carrying something here like a pair of corn walls up, or I actually have a jukebox up here that weighs about 600 pounds, and many, many, many other heavy items, I couldn't do any of that by myself, much less, you know, getting two or three buddies over. So the, uh, the, the famous singer Jack White once said, I guess you have to have a problem if you want to invent a contraption. And so that's what we've done here is we've invented a contraption. All right, back in June of 2020, uh, good friend and follower over the channel, Larry, reached out to him. He's done some other CAD work for me. He's been, been an absolutely uh, great follower of the channel here and, and done some great stuff for me and won't charge me a penny even though I keep trying to trying to reimburse him, but um, he drew this up for me. And what it is, is one by two inch metal tubing, and it's just a frame. And I had hand sketched it out on napkin, basically, sent him a picture of it. He drew it up in a nice CAD file. I took this over to a local welding shop here in my town, handed this to them. That guy said, yep, I can throw that together out of some scrap stuff. He called me about a week later and said, hey, if you wanna come by and pick this thing up, come on by. I went by, uh, it was $200 he charged me to weld this thing up and for the materials. And it was in the raw, I had to, uh, I had to then, you know, kind of send it down in places, uh, primered it, and I painted it red, uh, just the color I picked. But uh, big shout out to Larry, thank you for helping with this drawing. I will put this drawing up on the website, up on the website, blueglow.net, uh, under sketches and files, and you guys can find it if you want. So from a functional standpoint, I kind of designed the size of this thing to easily get one of these uh, industrial carts on top of it. And the reason for that is I've got about six of these carts and I just kind of roll them around the barn for different uses. If I'm working on a car, I've got parts laid out on it. Um, you know, if I've got a project going on, I've got it on it. And the beauty is I can kind of work on a project. Um, maybe I'm waiting on some parts, so I roll it out of the way. And I roll something else back in the way. So these carts are absolutely phenomenal for your barn. I'll put a link to these down below as well. Some of the, one of the best things I've ever done in the shop here is to buy several of these things. For those curious about the dimensions, it's 60 inches wide, uh, 30 inches deep, the platform. And that's nothing more than a piece of OSB that I kind of laid down on top of it and bolted to the bottom so you had a flat platform there. Let's get into how it actually works. All right, guys, before we go any further, I want to make a big public service announcement here for this video. This is not a lift designed for people. It's not designed for a wheelchair. Uh, as a matter of fact, I went down that path first. I thought, well, maybe I'll just get some kind of industrial wheelchair lift. All of a sudden, I was in the thousands of dollars, $5,000 up. And I thought that's crazy for what I'm gonna use it for. And like I said, I built this thing for $400, but not for people, not for people, not for people. Do not, do not get on this thing. Do not build one of these for people, okay? This is for hauling your stuff. All right, guys, let's talk about the major components of this lift. It's really simple, okay? I built a wooden frame out of two by fours, okay? Um, you can see on, on each side, there's four wide, four deep, lots of reinforcing on the corners. Honestly, I have more money in the wood than I did just about anything else because as we know these days uh, Wood is a precious commodity right up there with gold silver and platinum Any rate the whole purpose of the wooden frame is to hold up top here this metal I-beam that I'm pointing at now that metal I-beam like I said it's yeah, I think it was about seven feet long eight feet when I got it I bought it at a local metal scrap yard for $30 uh, heavy duty industrial I-beam about three inches wide, an inch and a half thick. And you could probably get that at any metal shop uh, or industrial supply type place. Or like I went to a metal scrap yard. I got it for $30. Hooked on top of that, right there, hanging over, and it came with the, this lift. This is an electric hoist 
and it came with all the mounting hardware. I just hung it over top of the I-beam and it's suspended there. Coming out of the I-beam, I think that's 3 16 inch metal cable. Came with the lift. If you'll notice, if you know anything, remember anything about your physics and uh, pulleys, so we're coming down, we're going through a pulley, we're going back up and we're attaching. So, because we're using the pulley in this scenario, that puts this thing at the weight rating of 1,320 pounds. Well, why wouldn't you do that all the time? Why would you want to go with... The other alternative is you just come down and you hook that hook directly onto the lift top here, uh, the cage, and it would lift it up and down. With the pulley, it goes twice as slow or half as fast, however you want to say that. But I'd rather have the extra weight security than speed. I'm not really trying to fly stuff up and down super fast. Um, so with the hook, you know, half as fast. And guys, I, I think this thing moves plenty fast. Um, even with it how it is right there. So then on each side here of the actual lift frame, some Unistrut. I got this Unistrut. I bought it from Zorro. Um, because I, ha I needed really long pieces. I think this one here is 28 feet long here on the right hand side. Uh, it's a little longer than the one on the left because the roof slope. $74 for, <laughs> for that thing delivered to my house for both pieces uh, off of Zorro.com. And actually a truck pulled up in front of my house on the road, came and rang my doorbell, uh, never pulled off. I had to go out there. He he uh, unloaded it and I carried it down here to the barn. But you can buy Unistrut anywhere. First, I tried using multiple sections of Unistrut and I just found it got very jerky going from section to section. So I ended up ordering these longer pieces. And the Unistrut's just bolted flat to the metal, to the wooden frame there. And if you'll notice coming out over here of the electric hoist coming over, up, over, and then that little blue box right there, it's just a 110 electrical outlet. So it's where the hoist gets its power from. The other cord coming out of that, that is a four conductor 16 gauge wire that feeds down and wraps around over here on the side. And then it comes and it gets in my hand as a little control unit like this. Down button, up button, off button, right? Super simple to use, not much to it. I will tell you, the lift only came with about eight feet on the uh, control cable, and I wanted it longer than that because what I wanted to be able to do, let's say I load the unit up up top, I want to be able to grab this thing, walk down the stairs to the bottom, and then push the button there and follow something all the way down. If I'm at the bottom, I want to grab this thing. I want to come up the stairs with it. So I just kind of have this cable laying over here near the stairs and that are right behind this, and I take this up and down. I'm sure I could have got innovative and built some kind of switch unit, or remote control, lots of things. I just went super simple hard wire here, and it's worked. Guys, I've been using this lift now three and a half years, and it has worked absolutely flawlessly for me at this point. All right, let's take a little look here at what we did on this side. So I just drilled two holes through the uh, through this uh, steel tubing here, and I've got washers underneath, and I've got two bolts here, and I, I put a little Loctite on them so I don't have to worry about them coming off. And this little U-bolt here was rated a little over a thousand pounds. So, um, and then I've just hooked to it. So, this, all intents and purposes, that might that this may be the weak link in this whole thing. Um, at about a thousand pound lift, but I don't, I don't think I've ever put anything more than four or five hundred pounds on this thing And I doubt that I ever would and then what I've got I've got four of these one at the top one at the bottom on each side here These are just little unistrut rollers that I bolted on to similarly two bolts washer Loctite and and then I've got purple grease in these things to keep everything and I grease the whole track up all the way up and down uh, to keep everything moving really smoothly you can see the ones bolted down on the bottom here and bolted down on the bottom of the frame over here. So we've got them at the bottom. We've got them up here at the top. And guys, keep in mind, that Unistrut and these rollers on the back of this thing, they only serve one purpose. It's really designed to keep this unit as it goes up and down from moving left or right or moving in and out. There's no weight on the Unistrut. Okay, it's just a guide to help this thing stay left and right and not go back and forth. 
there's like I said, there's no weight bearing to the Unistrut setup or those rollers in any way, shape or form. Just a guide to keep this thing straight up and down, not twisting left and right. All the weight on this unit is based on the frame itself, that little hook, the pulley, the cable going up, the actual electric hoist motor up top, the I-beam, which then sets on this heavy duty frame that I built that goes all the way down and I'll, I'll show you here where it reaches down to the bottom. Keep in mind the majority of the weight is sitting on the second floor truss here of the unit. So what has to go down to the bottom here, keep in mind all my framing for up here for the I-beam is actually sitting on some heavy duty beams that hold the second floor of this barn up. So I don't have I didn't have to carry the weight of the I-beams all the way to the to the floor at the very bottom. I just had to carry it to the beams here on the second floor. And if you'll notice, all I had to use was a couple 2x4s to then take it all the way down to the ground um, where I've got them kind of with some concrete nails holding those into the into the concrete there. So like I said, there's no weight on the unit strut. It's just a guide to keep this thing straight. And you can see these old barn stairs that are uh, 70, 80 years old that go down behind this. And uh, that's what I go up and down as I'm lifting things up. But give you perspective to this, how far up we are. All right, as you can see here at the bottom, it's all the way down. And I store some stuff underneath these stairs like everyone does. And as you can see here, I'll take you up. You can see I've carried the controller all the way down the stairs. I've set it there on the side um, as I came down with the unit. And you can see here as it goes up, it then goes up through a little hole. And I did we did build a frame around this hole. You kind of see how we framed it out up here. And it just goes up through that. So nothing, nothing complicated there. And if you see these beams up here that are hold up the second floor, um, right up in here, these things are about, you know, probably I don't know, 10 by eight. Uh, it's really, really heavy duty beams here that, that everything is ultimately sitting on top of um, and carries you up, up, up. And from down here, you can see it all the way up. I did have to notch a little bit there um, for the cables to go up and down all the way to the lift. Uh, but that's only because of the tight cutout that we made that fit exactly for this thing to go up and down. So once it's up and level, uh, it's just like floor there. You can walk right on this thing and walk right off of it. And that's how I typically leave the, the lift because I don't want this big open hole for somebody to accidentally stumble and fall down in. I imagine at some point I'll put some railing around just to kind of pe keep people out of that, especially as you know, I've got grand, I've got a grand a granddaughter now, and I imagine I'll have more at some point. So uh, safety is always a good thing. So here we go. So you can see how fast it moves. I put a lot of weight on it. Like I said, I think I've moved that jukebox maybe five, six hundred pounds. Probably the heaviest thing I've actually moved up there, total. And you, you guys get the, get it. It takes about probably 45 seconds or so for it to go from the bottom up to where it needs to go. And when we get it up there, we just stop it and we're done. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I cannot tell you, since I'm an electronics uh, channel here, how many amplifiers, speakers, you name it, I put on one of those carts, rolled onto this thing, moved up here and avoided carrying heavy items up and down the stairs, saving my back, potentially damaging the items. It's just been a godsend. And like I said, those industrial carts, one of the best ideas ever to have in your shop. You just roll them around, do what you need with them. All right, guys, here's the unit I bought, this Partsum 1,320 pound unit. Looks like it's no longer available. I purchased it June 21st, 2020, right? But if I scroll up a little bit, I notice there's one here. You know, Amazon's always making suggestions. So I click on this one. It's just a slightly different brand, probably the same exact manufacturer. Looks just like the one I've got, guys. Identical, okay? 1,320 pounds, 110 volt, 38 feet. It's more than, more than you're ever going to need. $169. So I put a link in here for this. By the way, I noticed here now they have a wireless control model for $200. I could have avoided the whole control cable thing and having to buy an extra long cable. So for the extra 50 bucks, that would have been a good deal. I would have I would have definitely gone that route. So if something ever happens to my lift, I'm definitely going to get one of the wireless controllers. They did not have that option back in 2020. 
Just a few more parts and pieces you may need to put this together. These are the uh, Unistrut hanger brackets that I used to mount to the 2x4s that then held, bolted in on the outside, held the Unistrut in place. Uh, looks like you get those $31. I did, I don't remember, I used maybe six or so, eight of these uh, going up and down the unit. By the way, these things were not $31 back then. Uh, these are decent price still. Uh, four pack of the trolley roller wheels that you need for $27 here. That is the same thing I used. I, this may be the kicker <laughs> that's changed the most. So uh, I told you guys, I bought, these things were 20 feet long. I bought two of them at $41.30, a total of $82. And they maybe I had a special, I don't remember what it was. I got free shipping. So with tax and all, I had $88.17 in the two pieces of Unistrut that I bought. However, when I go to Zorro's website today, they're not 40 some dollars a piece. They're $204 a piece. By the way, it says it requires a special delivery charge, $105 per item. Holy cow. So that's what, $400 worth of Unistrut plus $105 each. You got $600 plus in your Unistrut. By the way, guys, Unistrut, it is used for barn doors, all kinds of um, just regular uses. You can probably find this stuff at Tractor Supply Company or lots of other local places and avoid having to pay crazy money uh, like this. Uh, I just went this route because it was super simple and it delivered to my door in a couple days. Like I said, we had a lot of fun building this contraption. There again, please do not build one of these for any human uses, people riding up and down wheelchairs, whatnot. Hope you enjoyed seeing this. It's a little snippet of our audio barn we built and uh, we'll be showing you guys more soon. Thanks for watching everyone.